Hey up guys, um, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I know the thumbnail looked like it was offering a lot of razzle dazzle with the hat and all and honestly I do want to give you, you know, a look at a 10 out of 10 energy level type of review for Wonka because it's a very sugary, you know, excitable movie. Uh, but the truth is I am actually sick right now. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't really be recording this review. Okay, I have a terrible chesty cough, hence the lem sip, and uh, I also have a bad back right now, uh, which only gets worse every time I let out one of these chesty coughs. But yeah, <coughs> here it comes. <coughs> I gotta feed that YouTube algorithm somehow, and I did see Wonka at the weekend, and I do wanna discuss it. I just wanna apologize in advance that I'm not up to my normal energy levels in this review, okay? Bear with me on this review. Mm. So yeah. Today's movie I'm going to be reviewing on the channel is the latest film from filmmaker Paul King who gave us the wonderful Paddington movies and this time he's given us an adaptation of another beloved literary character, this time Willy Wonka from Roald Dahl's obviously Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but for the purpose of this movie it's just called Wonka and this film in many ways is a prequel of sorts to the 1971 film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, which starred Gene Wilder. In this version of this prequel film, we see Timothy Chalamet play the young, bright-eyed, slightly eccentric Willy Wonka, who is an aspiring magician, inventor, and chocolate maker, who wants to open his own chocolate shop, but realizes he has some tough competition from the likes of Slugworth, uh, Fickle Gruber and Prodnose. They make up the chocolate cartel, which is legitimately a thing in this film. And yeah, they will do anything that they can to stop Willy Wonka from eating into their profits as the kings of chocolate. I know a lot of people that were very skeptical about this film, and I can understand why. Like, the first trailer for this movie didn't actually really advertise the fact that the film is a musical. Like, this is a song and dance type musical, but the trailer didn't really highlight that. And also some people were nervous that Timothy Chalamet was a bit miscast in the role of Willy Wonka. Like the first few lines of dialogue they heard him deliver in the trailer. A lot of people were just saying, oh, he's just kind of doing, you know, a kooky imitation of like Gene Wilder, you know, a copy and paste sort of performance. Yeah, and also some people just have such a soft spot in their heart, you know, for the original 1971 film, that a lot of people didn't think we needed a prequel story of, as to how Wonka got his star, how he started his chocolate factory. Like, was the story justified? But I'm here to say to you guys that you should never doubt Paul King because he did the same thing with Paddington. Like, I remember, like, when people saw the trailers for the first Paddington movie, they were like, oh, Paddington looks weird. It's just this CGI fuzzy wuzzy bear. The story's gonna be terrible. And then people fell in love with those movies. I've seen grown men proclaim that some of the, pa the Paddington movies are some of their favorite films. And I get why they're very charming and very sweet and earnest. And they are just some of the loveliest films that we have like in the modern era. And I'm gonna say that I really loved watching Wonka. Like right from the start of this film, when you see the Warner Brothers logo on the screen and you just hear those familiar chords from the Pure Imagination song, the ding dong dong, ding dong dong. Yeah, I just had, the biggest smile plastered all over my face for the next two hours. I was smiling from ear to ear. This film was pure joy. Like, it lovingly pays tributes to its cinematic origins of the 1971 film and, of course, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory book, but it doesn't feel like it's just milking the nostalgia in order to make a quick buck. It tells its own original story with new and original songs. I don't think they're as instantly iconic or as catchy as the original 1971 film, but they are very sweet and heartfelt. And also we do get a rendition of the iconic Pure Imagination song, uh, this time from our boy Timmy Tim. You know, pull up in a monster automobile gangsta with a bad bitch that came from Sri Lanka. Yeah, I'm in the tanka color of Willy Wonka. You can be the king, but watch the queen gang. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna stop there because, yeah, I will do the, the whole verse. <coughs> mm. Tell you what, stick around to the end of this review and I will attempt to do the entire Nikki verse from Monster just for you guys, okay? <coughs> now you wanna see the white boy rap. <laughs> and I just said there was gonna be no razzle dazzle in this video. <coughs> I lied. Ooh. Anyway, what was the point I was trying to make? Oh yeah, uh, the fact that they do use um, like the songs from the 1971 film does sort of highlight how the new songs might not be as instantly memorable as those ones, uh, but 
I will say I did find myself like slowly singing along to the words of A Heart Full of Dreams or A World of Your Own. Like, um, yeah, sometimes a song just takes a few listens before it like, you know, earworms itself into your brain. Like um, a good example of that was a bunch of the songs from The Greatest Showman soundtrack. So yeah, time will tell. As for Timmy in the role of Willy Wonka, I loved him. I've seen Timothy Chalamet in a lot of serious projects since he really took off with Call Me By Your Name. Like he's really proven himself as a serious, dramatic actor, one of the best of his generation. And with Wonka, what was wonderful about his performance here is just that it really allowed him to be playful and funny and silly and just, you know, enjoy the role for all its quirkiness and be eccentric and dazzling. And that's the thing with Timothy Chalamet. He might not be the best singer, but he is an amazing performer. Like he really does give it his all. And this role just sort of cements him really as a true superstar of his generation. He really does have the charisma and the talent to do whatever project he wants because he really does just have it, you know? And he's backed up by an incredible supporting cast who are all clearly having so much fun on set. Like I could go through everyone in the cast list and tell you how great they were, but for me, the scene stealers were Olivia Coleman and Hugh Grant. Olivia Coleman is channeling some of that Madame Tédonier, Les Mis energy as the malevolent and callous Mrs. Scrubbit. And Hugh Grant is having a jolly silly time playing an Oompa Loompa. Like he's clearly just loving his career renaissance right now playing all these fun, silly parts. Like, is anyone having more fun making movies right now than Hugh Grant? Like, his last few projects just illustrate, he's just down for whatever and just clearly having a great time. Also, Carla Lane, who plays the girl Noodle, she was a magnificent discovery in this. Uh, she had wonderful chemistry with Timothy Chalamet, just lit up the screen every time she was on. Also, Sally Hawkins is in this. She maybe has three minutes worth of screen time, but my God. Sally Hawkins can do so much more with three minutes than most actors could do with an entire movie. She made me weep. Wow, she is so freaking good. She gets in, gets the job done, leaves the audience feeling their feels and gets out. Oh, she was just so good in this. But yeah, the entire ensemble of this film is terrific. Like there's not a single weak link in the chain. So yeah, props to casting director Nina Gold. Another thing that I really liked about this film was the production design. Like. You can really tell when an actor is on like an actual set that's been built as opposed to like a green screen soundstage. When an actor actually gets to like step into the world of something that's really creative and playful and like, you know, tactile, it just adds a little something extra to everyone's performances to see that joy and that, you know, that childhood imagination. It's like like being on the set of Barbie, you know? It's, it's, it's wonderful to step into a world that feels creative and imaginative, as well as the props and stuff like Willy Wonka's um, suitcase or bag with all his like um, chocolate making ingredients in. The details of this really add another level of whimsy to the film, which I just really love. And while there are certainly sequences in this film which use green screen and CGI, there is a lot of practicality still utilized and I really did like that about the film. Also, the costume work was fantastic by Lindy Hemming. As for negatives, where the film loses a few points for me was with the resolution right at the end. Like I wanted a little bit more from Noodle and her storyline about her parents because it all gets glossed over quite quickly. <laughs> like it's wrapped up in a neat little bow. I get it, it's a happy family film, but I just kind of wanted a little bit more on her ending to her story. Also with Keegan-Michael Key's chief of police character, he um, progressively gets more fat throughout the film because um, he's being bribed by the chocolate cartel with chocolates. And while him getting fatter in the film is not really done maliciously, it still is in and of itself a fat joke of sorts. And like, I, while I don't feel like the film is like pointing and laughing, like fat shaming him, it's it's still something I feel like some viewers might be a little bit um, upset by because at the end of the day, it's, a, it's comedy at the expense of someone's physical appearance. And so I think some people might be a little bit upset by that. But does the film have any Oscars chances? Um, maybe because of the timing of its release, maybe this film will be like fresh in some Academy voters' minds when they come to like, you know, fill out their ballots. So it could result in a few potential nominations in some craft categories, maybe costume design or production design. And it's not out of the realm of possibility that it could get nominated for best original song either, maybe for um, a world of your own. 
But that's probably about it, because at the end of the day, Wonka is a festive family film, okay? It doesn't really have the prestige to get into a lot of above-the-line categories at the Oscars, so it's not going to get, like, a screenplay norm or any acting norms or anything like that, but... Yeah, it could still show up in a couple tech or craft categories. So let's ask them three questions. Firstly, would I watch it again? Absolutely. Wonka is the cinematic equivalent of an ooey-gooey cup of hot chocolate, okay? It's it's comforting, it's sweet, it's festive, it'll, it makes you feel warm inside. I would happily watch this film again, and yes, I do think it's gonna get added to the wall at some point. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? <coughs> This is the perfect movie to take the entire family out to see at the cinema over the Christmas break. Like the Paddington movies, you don't need to be a kid to enjoy Wonka. It's a true family film, okay? It's sincerely fun for both kids and grown-ups. It's just such a positive and uplifting film. I think everyone will have a lovely time watching it. So yeah, I highly recommend it. Go watch it in a cinema, okay? And third question, what score to give out of 10? Wonka was scrum diddly umptious, okay? It made me joyful, it made me weep, okay? It did everything that I wanted it to, okay? So I'm gonna give Wonka a score of nine out of 10. But as always guys, it's just one bloke's opinion. I would love to hear from you. Have you seen Wonka? If you have, what did you make of it? What do you think of Timmy's performance? How, how does it compare to the 1971 film or the Johnny Depp film? Whatever you have to say, let your voice be heard in that comment section down below. If you have enjoyed the video, help me out with a little thumbs up button. If you want more movie, TV and Oscars related content, don't forget to click subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching guys. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars and popcorn culture, I'm Lee Carefield, and I'll see you next time. Oh yeah, and as promised... Pull up in the monster automobile gangster With a bad bitch that came from Sri Lanka Yeah, I'm in the tanker, color a Willy Wonka You can be the king, but watch the queen can go Okay, first things first, I eat your brains Then I'ma start rocking gold teeth and fangs Cause that's what a motherfucking monster do Here's Jesse from Milan, that's a monster do Monster Giuseppe Hill, that's a monster shoe Young money is the roster and a monster crew And I'm all up, all up, all up in the bank with a funny face And if I'm fake, I ain't noticed my money ain't gonna let me get the straight Wait, I'm the rookie? Cause my features in my shows Ten times you pay 50k for a verse, no album out Yeah, my money's so tall That my Barbie's gotta climb it Hotter that I'm at least inclined it Find it Tony Mataran, Dutty Wine Wine it Nicky and the titties when I sign it How these fellas all one track minded But really, really, I don't give a F U C K. Forget Barbie, fuck Nicky, she's fake She on a diet while her pockets eating cheesecake And I'll say, bro Try to chuck his charts play Just kill him another career It's a mild day Besides Jay They can't stand besides me I think me, you and Am Should menage Friday Pink wig, thick ass Give him whiplash I think big, get cash Make him blink fast Now look at what you just saw This is what you live for Ha! I'm a motherfucking monster! <laughs> <coughs> 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 There you go, folks Did I lie? No, the white boy can spit some rhymes. <coughs> <coughs> and on that note, I bid you guys bye-bye. <laughs>